you can become a target there and then. A lot of people in the realms fear, resent, or hate arcane spellcasters, or see them as targets to be wrung for coin, perhaps even captured and sold into slavery. Hey folks, welcome back to another Realms Lore story. I am here with Ed Greenwood, the original creator of the Forgotten Realms. Um, so, Ed, I am a person with the gift, and I want to flourish in my magical abilities. Can you tell me where I need to start? Well, you need to start by watching this video. Because um, this video is all about self-training. If you have the gift, hopefully you have lots and lots and lots of money and high station in life and a tutor. What if you don't? What then? That's what this video is about. You know you have magical power, but you don't have anyone to guide you. What do you do? So you're saying I need to practice? Practice makes everything in life... I'm out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> practice breathing, Ivan. Practice. <laughs> I, need, I need to do that. It's a lot of thought. Hi, I'm talking to you from my hotel room as I drive down to GaryCon 2024, because I'm really excited about a project that I'm working on with a lot of other talented people called The Tomb of Guys and Gags. Tomb of Guys and Gags is a mega adventure created by Luke Gygax and other legends of the game working together to celebrate the legacy of Gary Gygax, the creator of Dungeons and Dragons. Tomb of Guys and Gax is brought to you by a company called Gooey Q. They make adventures that are unmatched in quality and content from fans for fans. The result is an immersive, memorable, story-driven campaign that you can use at your gaming table. But time is running out. If you want to get the collector's edition that fans and collectors alike are going to want to have, you have to back it on Kickstarter right now. Click the link in the description or use the QR code on the screen to back two of Guys and Cacks. You don't want to miss this one. I will be collaborating with Luke Gygax and others to bring you A Trouble with Rats, which is an adventure that I'll tell you all about some other time. <gasps> so yeah, please sit back, relax, and enjoy this tale of wizardry. And if you can't, practice. Self-training in spellcraft and psionics in the realms. For reasons of safety, inability to pay someone, or simple lack of opportunities for contact with suitable tutors, many folk with the gift, that is, the ability to wield arcane magic, so sorcerers and wizards, or with psionic abilities, find themselves alone with their ability. If they don't know they have the gift, or never experience a situation that sparks a spontaneous release of their powers, they may never progress at all. Or they may become an uncontrolled, afraid of themselves, wild talent. That how you get started situation tends to be different for everyone and is, or should be, a storytelling moment. So here and now, I'd instead like to talk about what you do to train once you've awakened your powers and are on the way, but you don't have a tutor standing over you, guiding you. The short answer is practice. That is, do whatever you can do over and over again, tiring your mind, but building up its endurance, practicing precise control of a magical effect, such as its location and borders of effect, the precise direction and intensity of a release. If you're telekinesing a metal goblet, try lifting it higher, or for longer, or raising and lowering it from a tabletop so deftly that it makes no noise landing or taking off. Then try hurling it through the air as a weapon, with precision so you can use it to knock keys off a shelf in a particular direction and with the desired velocity. So you can depend on being able to do that, sending those keys just where you want them, even in a hurry and under pressure. Once you've mastered something, try little variations, seeing if by will and shaped and focused intent, you can alter the magical or psionic effect. Consider what possible augmentations in the way of material components or incantations might be necessary to achieve these differences in effect and experiment carefully 
incrementally and keeping records as there are so many variables in wielding magic and psionics that it will be difficult to duplicate a desired effect if you don't keep track of all the elements that led to that result. This may, for arcane magic, involve stockpiling lots of esoteric, difficult to find material components, the ongoing processes. Of requiring these can be a role-playing campaign in itself as you go adventuring one more time to get fresh cockatrice feathers or more manticore tail spikes. A lot of this self-training is boring to watch thanks to its repetitive nature, but is fraught with danger. Moreover, the danger sometimes increases when the training is done and a new spell or spell variant is achieved. If you're seen using the new spell or attempt to recoup your costs or make rent by selling scrolls of it or teaching someone else to do it, you can become a target there and then. A lot of people in the realms fear, resent, or hate arcane spellcasters or see them as targets to be wrung for coin, perhaps even captured and sold into slavery. Real-world professional sports teams consider what they're good at and what they're weak at, as they know opponents will try to exploit their weaknesses, and they have to prepare for that. So too should the practitioner of arcane magic or psionics, what am I good at? What am I vulnerable to? If I use my one good trick against a foe and they foil it, well, then what? How can I train to be better at something else, to fill the gaps in my armor and not be so vulnerable to this or that? Dungeons & Dragons has been around since 1974. I've been playing it since 1975, and I've sat at a lot of gaming tables. I've seen players running really powerful characters, but forgetting half the powers and defenses and abilities they have, and so not using them. I've also admired players running a low-level wizard who has just one spell but they've learned to really use that one spell to fully understand its limitations and how it can be used to ignite or trigger other things in a tense situation, to know in a few moments of thought what they can and can't do with it in a fight. How do they get that way? Practice. Practice and paying attention every time. So let us look at a lowly wizard in the realms, Shireen of High Moon. She was astonished to find a hidden spellbook after her mother's death, a mostly empty tome containing a lot of her mother's notes, which were deliberately cryptic. They were memory aids for her mother rather than detailed instructions for someone else reading the book, and the full rituals for four spells. Detect magic, identify, tensor's floating disc, and water breathing. Shireen knows that she has the gift, as once, when a traveling wizard cast a spell in High Moon, something stirred within her, and she felt him drawing energies from the weave. She should read the book carefully, looking for edge writing or anything magically hidden or cryptic references in the text to make sure she knows all that she holds in her hands. Then she should try to, in private, so no one discovers she's a wizard-to-be, successfully cast all of those spells. When she's done so, she should practice them until they're second nature, cast without hesitation, and she's figured out all of the drawbacks and tricks she can do with them. This is mastery of a spell. If she can possibly arrange it, she should try to cast these spells into or through known existing magical barriers or into the same area where another spell is taking effect or already has effect and seeing and recording what happens. Knowing what will happen when spells collide is the unwritten, unheralded side of being a wizard. And if you're an adventurer wizard, it's almost certainly going to mean the difference between maiming and enforced retirement or oblivion or continuing on in that career sooner or later. Shireen should also consider what sort of daily life she can build with this quartet of spells, casting them for pay. Just at first glance, we can see that she can tell folk if magic is at work on something or someone, learning things about enchanted items or the exact boundaries of active magic nearby. She can help carry and deliver things without need for a horse or cart and without leaving tracks on the ground. 
She can search the bottom of a pond for something fallen into it and enable others to do the same for a short period. These can be ongoing sources of income for Shireen. If she's in a rural or wilderland locale, she might be the only entity who has these abilities. And if she's in a busy city, she might be the cheapest or most easily available entity as more powerful and established resident wizards are insanely busy. There's something really satisfying in life about gaining skills and experience in using them. And that can apply to the lives of imaginary characters in a role-playing campaign, just as it does in real life. So practice climbing furniture or draperies in a hurry so you can lift your tensor's floating disc, loaded with shards of glass and daggers, up high, and then clawing your way on a loft to get that disc above the heads of foes so you can will the disc to go away at just the right moment and dump its dangerous cargo on those foes. See what else you can do with the disc, such as spreading a tapestry atop it and then objects you don't want seen atop the tapestry so you can float them out of a room while seeming to leave it empty-handed. Practice. It may just save your life someday. Hi! Welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. Gith Yankee. Gith Yankee. The Gith, for short. Although, most people never meet Gith Zerai, so it's always Gith Yankee. So, the Gith Yankee, the former slave race of the Mind Flayers, or Illicits, who broke away, who, who like, had a revolution and threw off the shackles so these people beat mind flayers as a race so um yeah uh, they're not just freckles you know they're not just freckles and long hair you should beware them yeah even if it's Baldur's gate 3 gets yankee beware beware the gets yankee beware the gets yankee my son if you're enjoying these videos, please be sure to like, subscribe, uh, turn on notifications so you can know when the next one comes out, and please consider becoming a protector of the realms. The support from the, that Patreon, that's patreon.com slash edgreenwood, is what allows us to continue making these videos, and you can get all sorts of stuff, exclusive realms lore, discord roles, and other great things. <laughs>